Well, I got involved through uh, Father McNeil. Padre actually lived next door to me for a while on mm -hmm. Corby, and he was a friend of my mother's, a really good friend of mine. He used to come to our church. He knew a ton of people who lived in the neighborhood. He asked us to host small meetings in our home. So I had like my immediate neighbors, about eight people come to my house and he sent a facilitator to ask if, if the university gave this building, which was Goodwill, to the neighborhood, what would you do with it? People like Luella Webster, who at the time I think had a little edge when it came to thinking about the Notre Dame, and she'll openly say that. You better uh, believe it. Uh, and that's exactly who Father Don pulled together. The people that had those little edges, and, but had important voices in the community. Was seeking out meetings, natural meetings that were happening already through the Northeast Neighborhood Council, or visiting schools, talking to other leaders, really trying to cultivate and listen to the ideas, and see how we could shape the building physically and then shape the programming within it from the Notre Dame side. But at the same time, we were looking for what resources existed in the community. This, these were the responses that we got. And they held that meeting at the Northeast Center. The room was actually full to capacity. And three things came out of what they thought. They wanted activities for kids, particularly tutoring. They wanted some recreation for them. They wanted computer classes for adults. And then, of course, the person I consulted when they talked to me about it, I said was, well, we've got to talk to Renalda Robinson. She is the one who knows exactly what's needed in this community. She was compassionate about making her neighborhood better than what it was. And that's, I think that's the reason they, that it became the Robinson the Robinson community. It seemed like a great fit and the community was really supportive of it. So if you think about it, this is the first major initiative that Notre Dame had launched that was not named after a donor. Um, it was named after a person in the community because of her reputation. Um, it, it, it's probably the first building named after someone who probably fought against Notre Dame as much as she fought for Notre Dame. Everything you see down at the, the Robinson Center even the color combinations mm -hmm. and stuff, we made a point of not making it look Notre Dame-ish. It was, and that was because Don had, Father Don had people on these groupings to decide the furniture, the carpet. They got to decide. Lots of listening to the parents once the students started. For the first six months, we weren't really sure how to do tutoring in a way that we could demonstrate results. We weren't sure how to do homework help. And we also said with our tutors early on, um, we don't want you to come in just once. We'd really like you to come in twice a week the whole semester. So we made a commitment, we asked them for a commitment to do that with some regularity because we said the relationship is as important as what you're doing on paper. So we would send out flyers and people just, we opened the door and people just came. We opened from 10 to 2 on Saturday. And we'd have kids waiting outside for us to open. And what Take 10 did was give us an opportunity to cultivate relationships in schools in particular because it's a school-based violence prevention initiative. Our students began to take financial literacy classes with the Jago Center. And they were able to get some actual prizes to start businesses as young entrepreneurs. It was very exciting to see Shakespeare as a program opening up in here at a time when we thought, Shakespeare? Who would take Shakespeare in our center? Um, and they embraced it because of the relationships that were formed, um, that it was unique and it gave them a chance to shine. Robotics was like that too. They, they gravitated toward an adult who really cared about them, an adult who helped push them to have high expectations for themselves, but actually taught them something that was a lot of fun to do. After School Program is one of the longest standing programs at the center, and it serves kids primarily from this neighborhood, um, first grade through 12th grade, so the whole age range. and. Um, I guess sort of the backbone of it was that kids would receive an hour of tutoring every day. 
from volunteer tutors. So we have, oh, I don't know, about 130 Notre Dame students. We've had to be pretty creative when it comes to maximizing the space that we have at the Robinson Center. Um, but one of the ways we've been able to do this is through partnerships. Um, for example, we have been able to work with our adult English as a New Language classes and actually add a little preschool in the back of the center for the children of the adults in those classes. Um, and our community-based learning partnerships with Notre Dame faculty have gotten our kids out of the center onto campus through things like the Biology Club. In fact, our youth were even able to serve as mentors for the Notre Dame students through our Shakespeare program. And the Department of Justice grant helped us to really push Take 10 forward, but the HUD grant helped us to think about the neighborhood, housing issues, um, lead prevention issues, lead poisoning prevention issues, and some of our older housing stock. It helped us to build new partnerships, and it helped us to build partners who were on campus as researchers and faculty. And the Robinson Center was lucky enough to receive an AmeriCorps grant, and this was a huge turning point in our ability to expand our programs. All of a sudden, we had 20 new enthusiastic members of our team eager to try new things that we had really only dreamed about before, and we were really able to go beyond our walls because of them. Um, there are the programs like the Literacy Corps Tutoring in the Boys and Girls Club, Shakespeare in the Schools, all of the educational programming at the Notre Dame Center for Arts and Culture. All of these things were possible because of the AmeriCorps members. Our youth have also had the opportunity to expand their horizons. Um, children in the Robinson Center After School Program have been to Ellis Island, the Statue of Liberty, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and the LEGO Robotics team even got to travel to Germany. We're also very proud that in the last four years, 15 of our youth have graduated high school and gone on to higher education. What I love most about the Robinson Center is the sense of family. It has made my life richer and better, and I just can't imagine the person I'd be without it. I have seen myself grow as a professional to not only create programs, but implement them and have them stay for years and years and because this is a place that puts inclusiveness and integrity in everything they do. We get the opportunity to grow together, um, have great friends, and learn about Shakespeare. I've learned things from uh, fourth graders. They changed my life. I love the Robinson Center because of the relationships that I've built over time. When you need someone to talk to, or you're having problems with school, or drama, or maybe something at home, there's always someone here. I get to come here and see new people and I get to do Shakespeare with a great and amazing teacher. The staff that work here, they're really helpful and they're nice. It really helped me build up my confidence. Because of the tutors and the staff. Because of the great staff and all the opportunities they provide for us. Here because it's a very fun place and on Fridays we get to find people. Where will the Robinson Center be 15 years from now? I see us as continuing to deepen our programs, um, continuing to expand our outreach, but also staying true to our foundation in the community and, and always following our motto of changing lives one relationship at a time.